Well, good morning and uh, welcome to our service this morning. We're uh, so glad that you've chosen to join us online. It's the 30th of August and it's a celebration Sunday, so we look forward to hearing um, good news from, from people. And we'll be joining together to sing and to pray. Uh, we have Linda with, uh, with a, a story for us. And we have more testimonies from members of our church family about uh, Bible verses that have helped them through tough times. And I'll be rounding up with a, a last parable uh, where Jesus says um, that the, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. An unusual choice, but um, we'll be coming to that later. And we've also got this or that where we'll be finding out a little bit more about some members of our congregation. Great. Would you like to pray before we start? Mm. Father, we come to you this morning and we offer you our worship. We want to tell you how much we love you and we ask that as we draw near to you, you would accept our offering of worship and it would bless you and bring you joy. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone. As you can see, it's been my cel celebration of my 70th birthday and I've had a fantastic time. I'm celebrating that the sun shone for my birthday. Thank you, Lord. I came down for your birthday, but late because I had a job interview this morning. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's good to see you too. <laughs> Got ya! <laughs> my idea! This month I am mostly celebrating my birthday. Woo! Woo! I'm celebrating that it's my birthday. Well, we as a family have managed to have a week away on holiday with all our children and our son in law which is a really lovely week together. Um, we had a great time spending time together, which we don't always get much time to do. Oh yes, I've also had a milestone birthday and was very blessed by being able to celebrate through lots of small groups of friends getting together, which was I was really blessed. I'm celebrating that Esther has turned 14 and that Becca has passed an exam to um, apply to medical school. And so am I. I'm celebrating that school starts soon and that uh, gives a good reason for the girls to get out of bed in the mornings. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday dear Annabelle! Please don't spit all over it. So these, these COVID oh, safe smells candles. That? COVID safe candles, yeah. <laughs> you know, lovely you know, I'm celebrating that my parents were uh, married for 60 years. I'm playing Monopoly with my daughter. And we have a celebration, sweeties. Thank you. I'm winning. <laughs> I'm celebrating um, that my mum gets a lot of support so that my dad can stay at home a little bit longer. Um, Luca's birthday last month, he became 18. 19. 19! <laughs> <laughs> and we have some candies. <laughs> uh, today I want to thank God for amazing, generous friends that around five or six years ago gave us their family tent, uh, which has meant that, you know, every year since we've been able to go on affordable breaks, uh, which gets us away from the stresses and strains of everyday life and has enabled us to create loads of special family memories. So yeah, thank you God for amazing friends.
I'm going to do an experiment. And it's the best kind of experiment, because I can eat it. In Matthew 13, Jesus told this story or parable. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman used in bread making. Even though she only put a small amount of yeast in, three measures of flour, it changed the whole of the batch. Now, I'm looking at this yeast. I'm wondering, how can this yeast be like heaven? I thought we would have a go at making some bread, just like the woman in our story, and finding out what happens. Have you ever used yeast in um, some bread making before? Well, I'm going to put my small amount of yeast in and some water. I'm really not sure how this little bit of yeast is going to change all of that flour, but we're going to find out. I'm going to mix that in. And as it's an experiment, I've also got some flour that doesn't have any yeast. So in my clear bowl, I've got my yeast. And in this bowl, I'm just going to put some flour and water. And we're going to find out what's going to happen. We might have to wait a little bit of time as well. So the yeast will spread through the dough, hopefully and we'll change it in some way. Now all we have to do is wait. I have come back to have a look at our dough. Can you remember which one had the yeast in? Yes, the one in the clear bowl. It's only been 10 minutes and not much has changed. I think though the yeast works very, very, very slowly. So I'm going to leave it and come back a bit later. After 30 minutes, wow, I think something's beginning to happen. The dough with the yeast is starting to get a bit bigger. Something is slowly happening. There are definitely changes. Perhaps the yeast works a little, little bit like how Jesus does in our lives. There are little changes, changes that start in our hearts and have little effect on how people might see us behaving. Perhaps we start um, doing kind things, helping others, and that's just a little beginning. After an hour, wow, the dough with the yeast in is much bigger. That tiny microscopic yeast has changed all the dough. And we can see really clearly now, it's much, much bigger. I think it's ready for baking. I'm looking forward to sharing my bread with my family. Perhaps you can share something this week about how Jesus has changed you. You could tell some of your friends about Jesus and that might, might then make a little change. Just... This, that and the other and all that. TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. Art or science? Science. Smart or casual? Casual. Zoom or FaceTime? Zoom. Roll on or spray? Spray. Ketchup or mayo? Ketchup. Chips or jacket potato? Chips. Cash or card? Cash. Skateboard or surf? Surf. Abseil or bungee? Bungee. Happy day or no longer slaves? Happy day. Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, Christmas Day, orange or black currant, orange, sing or prayer, sing, park for herald or silent night, park for herald, silent prayer or spoken prayer, silent prayer. TikTok or Instagram, Instagram, art or science, science, smart or casual, casual, Zoom or FaceTime, Zoom, Roll on or spray, spray. Ketchup or mayo, ketchup. Chips or jacket potato, jacket potato. Cash or card, card. Skateboard or surf, surf. Absal or bungee, bungee. Happy day or no longer slaves, no longer slaves.
Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, orange or black current, black current, sin or pray, pray, park the herald or silent night, silent night, silent prayer or spoken prayer, silent prayer. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in a rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence, praise. In deeper reverence, praise. In simple trust like theirs who heard, beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord. Let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. O Sabbath, rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love, interpreted by by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace, the beauty of thy peace. Breathe through the heats of our desire thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb let flesh retire, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still, small voice of calm, O still, small voice of calm.
Sarah here. Um, the verse that I want to share with you is Isaiah 40 uh, verse 31. Uh, Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not faint. Um, this verse has come to me uh, several times during lockdown and it's each time it's been really, really helpful. Uh, I just found that, you know, whatever challenges that I've been facing, whether it's uh, at work or at home or in terms of uh, dealing with the lockdown restrictions, um, it just it it helps us realise that uh, nothing's insurmountable when it comes to the Lord. He will help us through whatever challenges we face. Uh, and it doesn't matter um, how difficult things might appear to be. Um, there's always a way of um, achieving what he wants us to achieve and meeting the needs of others. Um, so where there's a will, there's a way, because those um, eagle's wings will always carry us through and that hope in the Lord enables us to renew our strength and do what he wants. God bless you all. See you soon. Bye. One of my favourite verses is from Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Good morning. I would like to share with you a verse that has stayed with me as a source of strength in times of real difficulty. We are all suffering to one extent or another with this epidemic that is also preventing us from meeting together in the way that Christians have done for generations. This has always been a valuable source of support, but God has promised to help all who will trust in him. And I would say that we all need to pray for strengthened faith at this time. The Christian life is one of continuing to follow Jesus and grow so our faith becomes even stronger. The verse I want to share has helped remind me of this when I have found myself in real difficulty. I'm fortunate in being an optimist. In fact, my dad always used to refer to me as the eternal optimist. Once I had a successful business I had built up over 30 years. It had an annual turnover of a quarter of a million pounds but due to trading conditions suddenly it failed and I had to start my life all over again. I realised that my upbringing as a Christian particularly Sunday school and youth meetings had given me a strong faith, so I did still believe that all things work together for good to them that love God, another verse I cling to in times of trouble. But in times of real disasters, I turn to 2 Colossians verse 6 and 7, and now, just as you accepted Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. This verse is like a kickstart to me, reminding me that this Christian life is a journey, and allowing my roots to grow into him will increase my faith, empowering me to go on, knowing I am not alone, but walking with Jesus, who will keep me safe. No wonder the Bible says at the end of this verse, if we follow this, we will end up overflowing with thankfulness. God bless. Some verses that have been really special to me through the whole of my Christian life, really, have been from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and some of the first few verses. I'm going to read them to you from 
the good news version which I used when I was a teenager and these verses are actually underlined in that Bible. Israel, the Lord who created you, says, Do not be afraid, I will save you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through deep waters, I will be with you. Your troubles will not overwhelm you. I am the Lord your God, the holy God of Israel who saves you. Because you are precious to me and because I love and honour you, do not be afraid. I am with you. And I think these verses have always meant a lot to me because no matter whether you're going through teenage angst or midlife crisis, any of the things that come upon you in adult life, it's just so comforting to know that I'm called and chosen and precious in God's sight, that I'm his, that he holds me, that he's always with me and that nothing can overwhelm me if I bring them to him and if I trust and rest in his unfailing love and mercy and goodness and kindness which he's always shown me I just know that he will never let me down he's never let me down throughout my life he will never let me down until the day I die so some very special and precious verses to me So we come to the end of this month where we've been looking at uh, parables and we finish in Luke chapter 13. 
with verses 20 and 21. Jesus also asked, what else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Do you believe that God is at work in the world? I mean, I mean, do you? Do you actually? This 2020 COVID-ridden world, this never more politically divided world with, with more technology than ever. Do you believe God's at work? Have a chat with others. If you're sat in a room with family or, or just with yourself, is God at work in the world? Take five. I wonder how many of you started talking. That wasn't quite five. If you were talking, carry on the conversation later. So around a month ago, I was thinking about what parables we might sort of look at during August. And this is one that never really gets near the radar. It's not a big hitter in parabolic terms. But it might just be what we need to hear this morning because this is Jesus' way of saying to those who have the ears to hear, relax. I am at work in the world and we need to hear that. I have a vivid memory of when uh, we were training uh, at the Salvation Army's Training College. The most inspirational Major Phil Garnham, our mission studies lecturer, ambled into a lecture theatre and said to us that he'd been wondering what to say to us and he said, I just remembered walking across this morning that Jesus said, I will build my church. Now I found that really takes the, the pressure off and, and we laughed and uh, it's the only real thing I remember from, from that lecture and from much of my studies and we could do with that in these days. The pressure being off. Not saying that we need to chill out. I mean, God still has stuff for us to do here. There are people to love and to serve and, and we still hear the call uh, individually to get to know Jesus more fully. It is just that, well, God has got this. I know it's 2020 and things are not going smoothly. And at the time of delivering this, as I speak, it's Friday the 21st of August, nine days ago, I can't see that much will change in the next uh, nine days. But this parable may just say to someone this morning, relax, God is still on the throne and God is at work in the world. And all we need to do is join in with what he's doing, with God's mission, rather than trying to run around full of angst, trying to do the things we think are the right things um, that flow out of ourselves. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast and a woman mixes it in. The Greek word is enkryptos, to hide the yeast in the bread. And even though there is lots of flour in the mix, the yeast still reaches every part of the loaf. And so we know the bread will rise. Some points, yeast. Um, I think we have to read it as something like influence in this context. Jesus had described the yeast of the Pharisees as being a negative influence. And of course, at the Passover, how did Jews take their bread? Unleavened, without yeast. yeast. So we want to park those negative connotations and think about yeast as maybe a disruption of the old order and, and an influence. Um, and of course, yeast has the power to transform, maybe even subversively by stealth. What even is yeast? Well, yeast is a single cell organism with a long name, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. Yeast needs food and warmth and moisture to thrive because yeast is alive and it convert, can, converts its food, sugar and starch, through fermentation into carbon dioxide and alcohol. And it's the carbon dioxide that makes baked goods rise. Yeast is alive and the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. God is alive. There are over 1,500 different species of yeast. I expect you knew that. And, and yeast is all over the place, not just making bread rise, but turning grape juice into wine. Uh, there's yeast on the skins of, of fruit and plants. It's on people's skin and it's even in your gut, in your digestive system. It's in the soil and, 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 and yeast has even been found in deep sea environments. Yeast is everywhere. And the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. The kingdom is all around us. And just as the yeast spreads throughout all of the dough, imperceptible to the human eye, Jesus is at work. Yeast 
everywhere, but small and often difficult to discern, yet doing its stuff. Again, context, looking at what comes before and after any scripture is always useful. And right before this little passage about yeast, we have Jesus teaching in the synagogue and he sees a lady who has been crippled and malformed for 18 years, unable to stand up, buckling under the influence of an evil spirit. And Jesus calls her over and there is tension in the room because it is the Sabbath and the act of healing on the Sabbath is not permitted and the synagogue, synagogue leader must have been thinking, oh no, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to break the rules. And he does. Jesus heals her with a small word and a touch. She stands up free and the indignation is released in the room. There are six days in a week to do this stuff, says the synagogue leader, and you have to go and do it on the seventh. And Jesus is like, well, look, you look after your, your animals, you untie your animals on the Sabbath. Why wouldn't we free people who have been captive for donkey's years, if you'll pardon the pun. Jesus went further than that. He called the most important man in the building, the, the, the synagogue uh, leader, a hypocrite. And then Jesus tells these two tiny parables, one about the tiny mustard seed in a garden that grows and grows and provides home and shelter and life for all kinds of creatures, and one about the microscopic yeast that affects the whole loaf. Barely parables, almost more like little sayings. One action in a synagogue on a Sabbath. What on earth can that achieve? Well, Tom Wright says this. He says that every time you break the satanic chains that have tied people up, another victory is won which will go on having repercussions. And, and the crowd went wild as Jesus brought freedom to that woman. And as that synagogue crowd react, whether they were disturbed or delighted, we begin to see that what Jesus is doing for this poor woman, he is longing to ultimately do for the whole world. And that includes you and it includes me. Yeast. This is what um, a, a bread baker once said about yeast. Yeast has taught me to watch, to be patient, and know the importance of timing. When to wait and trust that the dough is rising without my help and when to intervene and divide, shape, fold or bake the dough. The day you think you've nailed it, the dough humbles you with some sort of change. Yeast is alive and it has taught me how to work with the living and how to actively wait. What an amazing quote. We may not always see it. We may not always know what quite to do and how to join in, but God is working just as the yeast is having its effect on its environment. The loaf will rise. What does this parable teach us? It teaches us that the kingdom of heaven is alive and well. It teaches us that the kingdom is everywhere, right through the whole loaf, the whole fabric creation. We learn that if we pay attention, we can see that the kingdom can transform anything it touches. And it teaches us that the ripples from one action can affect other situations and that goodness ultimately will spread, will spread through the whole loaf. Some questions for us to consider. Where do we see the kingdom of heaven alive and at work around us? How do we nurture it and encourage its growing and flourishing? Is God calling us to change our methods so that we might keep up with what he's doing? In what ways would we say our community is being transformed? How are we being transformed? I would say to you, trust. Even if you are not sure what the answers to those questions are, trust Jesus. Even when I can't see it, you're working. That's a lyric from the bridge of our final song, Waymaker. And I challenge you to belt these words out and believe them. And don't just join in with the song, but join in with the God of creation who is making all things new, even you, 
and even me. And as someone once prayed, your kingdom come. Stop working.